Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. What a remarkable week in Arizona. We've never seen anything like this. A sea of red, red for red. Marching from the ballpark down to the state capitol. And it was a throng, at least 50,000 strong, some estimates as high as 75,000. We don't even have 75,000 teachers in this state, so um, we're more around 45,000. So this was a lot of kids, supporters, parents. Um, this is a movement. And the legislature late Friday responds. Governor Doug Ducey um, and President Yarborough, Speaker Mesnard, announcing a budget deal to give teachers a pay increase by 2020 a 20 percent increase. This has just dropped on us as we are taping this program on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Our guests this week on Newsmaker Sunday, these are the folks involved in the middle of it. State Representative Noel Campbell, rep uh, Republican from Prescott. He's proposed actually a temporary one cent sales tax. Money created would go solely for education. Joe Thomas, you're familiar with, head of the, pre uh, the president of the Arizona Education Association. Thank you both. Absolutely. Uh, you haven't had a chance to look this over. No, no. My impression interviewing the governor on Thursday was that he feels if he gets the teachers a 20% raise, the rationale for the strike ends. What do you say? Well, we had uh, 70,000 plus educators that came down to the Capitol yesterday. We had um, well over half of that today. Uh, we kind of moved the time to have it a little bit earlier in the morning so that the heat wouldn't be so oppressive. Right. Um, and every one of them are, are taking this stand for their students. And so I think the governor um, and potentially the legislature will miss the boat on this one because they think that what they need to do is simply give a raise. We do need to address the, the worst teacher uh, salaries in the nation, but this is much more about technology, uh, class size, making sure the buses and the air conditioners work all year long. There's so many needs that our schools mm -hmm. have had because they're in this scarcity system that we've had since about 2008 with the recession. Mm -hmm. But if he focuses only on one piece and tries to oversell it, I think he's going to see that educators just aren't going to fall in line with it. Representative Campbell, you've been down there a while. You know how this thing operates. Um, I'm always struck when I look at the state budget. You know, we talk about uh, education doesn't matter. These guys don't care about education. But when I look at the budget, Almost half of That's it right. goes to K through 12. So That's it's right. not as if, I, I wonder what the problem is because we have made it obviously a priority if yeah. it's half the budget, right? Well, first you have to realize that 80% of the land in this state is owned by the federal government and the state land trust, the state. And there's, we're not able to get any tax revenue off of these state lands and federal lands. And so these rural counties have a very tough time uh, coming up with, uh, they can't do bonds and overrides because they don't have the tax base mm -hmm. to do that. So uh, it's a real problem, and I think that everybody down there recognizes that, that uh, we need to put more money in education. The problem is, is that we don't, when the governor first came out, he had, in my opinion, very optimistic projections for the next three or four years. And the legislature had uh, different uh, projections for that. And while they were in negotiation, I was not part of that. I'm not an education expert. I'm just I'm the transportation chairman. Right. So. Um, but you've been around. You I mean? have, and and uh, so I'm not surprised because we we spent a lot of time on this. The issue for us in the legislature is that I hope that the the agreement uh, takes care of the needs that we have for our communities. For example, in Yavapai County, Mayor School District uh, lost 56 students due to the fire and the flood that came through that community. And so they lost basically $300,000. And then in the budget request, I asked for $300,000 to make them whole. And it was in there. And also, I asked for $5 million for the Prescott firefighters. And, and that was in the budget. There but are I don't competing know where they are interests all Yes, all right. Time. Yeah. Do you believe it's a tax cutting fever that we went through in the last 10 years, really to cut taxes to a point where education can't be funded appropriately in Arizona? Well, absolutely. I mean, you believe that's the root of this? If you have 30 years of tax cuts, where almost every single year somebody in the legislature convinced enough people and a governor to sign a tax cut, then it's, it's a culture of tax cuts. And the problem is um, people that are impacted by tax cuts love them, but students are always impacted by tax cuts. Half, if half of your budget, goes to K-12 education, then half of every tax cut is taken from K-12 right. education. So a $100 million tax that's cut, it. that's They're $50 million. Dollars. Disproportionately Kids hard. get hit every yes. time. Right. And so when we went into the recession, 
educators understood we all needed to tighten our belts a little bit because we were all going to have to do a little bit more with less. But that was 10 years ago. We've moved out of it. The governor mm -hmm. and others brag all the time about the low uh, unemployment rate in the state. And we the need revenues. To start, right, right, and the revenues that are up. But and the we need to make sure that lagged, those... Right? Revenues coming back in have lagged. Only the last two years has it right, started sorry. to get back to where we were. Well, and part of that is because uh, if you look at the last 10 years, somebody again found a way to cut revenue. Right? These sweetheart deals for different groups that can come in and can lobby, and we forget that we need to make You're sure. Laughing. Well, we forget that <laughs> we need to make sure time. that, that we, <laughs> we need to invest in our K 12 system. Right. And that's, that's the true economic driver is these kids that come out and can go to college, that can move right into the trade school, that can go out and they can be pro productive citizens. I talked to the governor uh, Thursday afternoon. I want to play uh, cut number three. Um, I was asking him, you know, where are you at on this whole thing? Just, just take a listen. I look at this as something that I want to resolve. I believe our teachers have earned a raise. They deserve this. Now I need to get the legislature to come along with me. Okay, let me break it down. Joe, this will be the first time you're hearing it. Sure. Uh, it's, he's, the governor tweeted this out moments ago. Again, we're taping Friday. You guys all think I'm up on Sunday morning. I need, I need a day off. <laughs> um, and thank you both for being here, by the way. Uh, hashtag 20 times 2020. Uh, it's official. We have a deal. 20% pay increase for teachers by 2020. Permanent ongoing protected base, protected right. in the base yes. formula. Mm -hmm. uh, 100 million. So you could look at that as a 26% uh, uh, pay raise for teachers because every year they're going to get at least a up to a 2% increase in funding. 100 so million. Years, uh, I've got more. 100 million in additional dollars for support staff. Increasing to 371 million over five years, no tax increase. Well, right. And the last piece, I believe, uh, what I've heard to up to now is that's called district additional assistance, and that is money that's set aside for um, expendable goods, um, things that are going to last for a few years, mm -hmm. supplies and all of that. And they're already, as they pass it, they're cannibalizing it and saying, well, we put this in for supplies and technology, but we're immediately going to take that out and we're going to give it to our clients. This is when you guys staff. claim yeah. shell game, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, the entire thing. Well, let me thing, ask you, uh, uh, yeah. Representative Camp, is it a shell, First shell of all, game? the legislature is not in the business of teacher salaries. That's not what we're about. That's the school district. What do you district. mean by that? Well, we don't set teacher salaries. The districts do. That's right. right. And the districts should be okay. overseen by the school boards who would really focus in on how this money is being spent. And we know over the last 15 years or so, we have less money going into the classroom than we did 10, 12 years oh, ago. No, there's no doubt. And per so, pupil spending now is, is now down $1,000 from what it was in 08. Yes, it is. That's a well, big hit. Well, and more so than that, it's $3,000 beneath the national average. So I, I can appreciate what Representative Campbell is saying, is they don't set our teacher's salary, but they do set the amount of money that districts that's get. Right. And if we're almost dead last in our per-pupil funding, then that's why we're going to have the highest, some of the highest class sizes in the nation, some of the uh, most aggressive teacher turnover in the nation, mm -hmm. and some of the lowest salaries in the nation. So there's just no way to divide ahead, the money you... up to where you can give teachers raises if it's just not there. We, you know, we hear about teacher turnover. You know, 50% of all new teachers get out of the field in five years. They find out it's not for them. And so that turnover, there is a turnover, but it's not so much related to the salaries uh, in the early portion of their careers as it is the dealing with, uh, you know, teenagers and students. And that's my opinion. I, I substitute taught in the Glendale Union School District. And we got it's two teachers here today. Well, that's I'm perfect. not really a teacher. I was a substitute. Okay. Let me ask you about that because, you know, numbers get thrown around. Sure. Somebody pointed out to me, they said, if you've got over 2,000 uh, schools in Arizona, we've got 2,200 roughly. School sites. School sites. Sure. If you lose one teacher out of each of those schools in a year, there's your 2,000 teacher shortage. And that's mm. not unreasonable to think that you might lose one teacher per school a year to retirement but, or something else. Right, but you, all, you always have the um, salary and the benefits and the compensation to bring them back. And that's what we've not had in the last few years, which is why we have about 5,000 classrooms that, that are disproportionately in the, in the rural areas that don't have a certified teacher. They have a long-term sub, and God bless the long-term subs. I mean, they're trying. Or they have a long-term or a long-term emergency substitute. That's Band someone that only Band has well a long-term emergency sub. There are hundreds of them in the state teaching classrooms. They have a high school diploma or a GED, and that's it. That's all that's required. Joe, that's because of low salaries. We're not attracting and retaining our educators. When you hear that the governor is going to give you a 20 percent raise, um, it, as as a as an organizer of the union, mm -hmm. 
Do you fear that, that then the impetus to keep pushing on these other issues goes away? That this, well, will, this will take the public, um, the public will say, okay, they solved it. Thank you. I don't have to think about this anymore, and I can take my kids back to school. It's a great concern because this raise is nowhere near that. The governor's uh, actually finding, if, if, it's, if it's true what's in his tweets, I mean, Twitter, a lot of, a lot of public officials use Twitter, and, and it's not always accurate. But if it's accurate, it's 9%. Percent. He's counting 1% percent from last That's year, 9% from this year, and then teachers are supposed to trust their government for 5% next year and 5% the percent after that. And Representative Campbell knows better than anybody else because he's down there that the legislature this year can't tell next year's legislature right. what to do. So this is a kiss he's and a promise a for half of, of this. Of course, okay. of course. So let me ask you, as we sit here right now, is this satisfying at all to you? Do you feel the governor is making a good faith effort to try to solve this thing? Uh, what we need to see is the $1 billion brought back into our schools. That's what we were, um, that's what was cut in 2008, right. and that is what the Arizona Educators United, mm -hmm. this whole Red for Ed movement, that's what they want back there in there. There is not, Representative Campbell, there is not a billion dollars floating around in the state to cut a check no, for that. No, of course right? not. You'd have to go to a, uh, a sales tax or, uh, you know, as they propose, uh, taxing uh, wealthier s citizens. But for every, when you do this, uh, it draws out all these forces to stop it. I mean, it just does. And the easiest way to do it is, a, in my opinion, is but a sales tax for But it's at least a 60 percent issue on a tax, uh, particularly, I, I think, probably a sales tax because it's spread over so right. many people. Sure. Isn't it a, wouldn't that be a 60 percent issue in Arizona to raise, raise uh, education dollars? Or do you think there's some fatigue? We've had several of oh, these sure. on ballots in the past yeah. 10 years. Well, in my proposal, strictly for education, it deals uh, with um, teacher compensation and extra money for the schools through uh, the, the, the needs that they have. It also would deal with funding uh, all day, a full day K, and making it a grade. And that really would help our rural counties because they can't go out and bond an override to do that. Right. That's number two. The third thing it would have done is uh, helped uh, with our technical education for JTEDs for the career enhancement that we have jobs and we don't have the personnel. And the last thing it would have done, any, any money left over, would go right to our students at the university system to help legal residents of this state have reduced tuition. So focused all on education, and that's why I've, it's not dedicated to anything else. Just education. Right. Let me ask you, is this an either or? Uh, the governor's plan would be augmented probably, when you're talking about a billion, to restore funding mm -hmm. to 2008 levels. You'd need another mechanism. We're going to mm -hmm. have right. maybe sure. both. We'd have the governor's plan oh, and a and a, a bond. <laughs> well, right. the not a bond. Pardon me, and uh -huh. as a uh, an initiative. Right, and the Constitution gives us two pathways here. I mean, the, the legislature right. uh, has the power to appropriate funding. The governor right. would sign a budget. And, you know, back in January, the governor said, "Here are our priorities." That's uh, that's out of practice. And then they also uh, bless the citizens of Arizona. The Constitution does with the initiative process. Sure. So it may be a one-two punch. We would love to see the legislature do what they need to do and find all these revenue streams. Now, I know that's a difficult lift. But when we don't find those revenue streams, what we're saying is teachers, you're going to have to make up that gap. Mm -hmm. And students, you're going to have to live in those gaps. And we've done it for 10 years. Can I ask a million dollar question that nobody is asking? How about the billion dollar That's question? fine. <laughs> I'll ask you the billion dollar question. And, and I think taxpayers are owed an answer on sure. this. If we do this, what do we get? Do we get a better outcome in education if we invest this kind of money? Better graduation rates? better test scores. Mm -hmm. If we're going to spend this, sure. what are we getting? Mm -hmm. Can you say with absolute certainty we will get a better product in Arizona? I believe that we'll be able to attract and retain more educators. We, we graduate a That's lot. That's a different of, question. Yes, I know, no, but what it is is it brings stability because if, if in the rural areas we can hire and keep <coughs> for careers quality educators, then we're not relying on people with a high school diploma or a GED or a college degree without any education uh, courses whatsoever. It's going to bring quality people into the classroom and it's going to keep them there. Whereas right now, you can go to any surrounding state and get a significant raise, and that's what Arizona educators are doing right now. So you're so saying better teachers I think produce it's better a better teachers, product. Better teachers, more stability in the system, and uh, the, gives the schools the resources they need to be successful with their students. Because this is about school counselors and school psychologists and all the other people that impact a student as Do well. you believe that? Do you believe we end up at the end of this, is there, yeah. is there evidence that more spending will give you a better outcome? I think so, especially with uh, making uh, all-day kindergarten a grade. Mm. Uh, that's been pretty well documented right. that uh, by the time they're three years old or in third grade that their reading is so much better. 
I think that's a valuable program, and I think the JTEDS and techni techni technical education is super. I mean, we, we, I really support that program. And uh, as to that outcomes, you know, we have some serious problems in this state, and you have good outcomes when you have parents involved, and, and really that's the key, parental involvement. And that's why you see half of the students in this state are using school choice of one form or another, going to different districts, charter schools, parochial, private homeschooling. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that it, but the public schools have to deal with so many problems that these other schools don't. They become don't. de facto well, parents for example, in a lot of cases, teachers have. And, and Joe, you, you know this, that uh, you, take, uh, you take all these special needs students. Sure. You have 14 percent of the students in public schools are special needs. They eat up 25 or 26 percent of the budget. So there's different things going on in the public schools. That are, that are drivers. I, and I support cost. our public schools as well as I support our private Homeschooling. I support My kids whatever are works. in them. I mean, I'm, right. I'm watching this with interest, and so many of right. all, all of you are as well. We're going to take a break here on Newsmaker Sunday. We've got a deal. Uh, the governor and the legislature have come up with um, a plan to pay teachers, give them their raise, and some other monies. Is it enough? We're here with State Representative Noel Campbell of Prescott, a Republican, Joe Thomas, head and president of the Arizona Education Association. Back in a minute on Newsmaker Sunday. Back on Newsmakers Sunday with uh, State Representative Noel Campbell, Republican from Prescott. He's proposed a temporary one cent sales tax to pay for, and it would go solely to education. Joe Thomas, I'm sure you're familiar with, you've seen him all over television uh, the last uh, couple of weeks, head of uh, the Arizona Education Association. So we get a deal uh, late Friday to pay teachers uh, more money. Um, I had asked the governor on Thursday, did he think that? that this would be the end of it if he gives them that raise? Does he feel his work is done? Um, and uh, let's go to cut five. I want to hear from the governor on this. Cut five from Thursday. What I think is important in this budget is that we make certain the dollars that we're passing that are additional for K-12 get to our teachers. I believe that can the that be done. It can, you can, it can be done. Actually, mandated. Yes, it, okay. it can be done, and it will be done in in this budget, the budget that I intend to sign. But I do believe that the governor and the legislature should remain in the resources business, and let's have the superintendents and the principals in the, in the teacher pay business and understanding where dollars should go because each school is different each classroom is different okay this issue of of earmarking the money sure. specifically for teachers is that problematic to does it handcuff the districts to not be able to do what they need to do with the money or do you like saying teachers need it let's get it to them and let's get out of uh, the the districts gobbling it up and all kinds of other right. stuff I would like to say that I think if the teachers continue their walk out I like to call it a strike their public employee union and, and work for the state. Uh, that they go past uh, any further on this, it's only going to hurt them. I really believe that. Um, anybody in this state would like a 20% raise over the next three years. And I know that it's long overdue, but we cannot uh, have our children put in jeopardy of, of not having our teachers in class. That's where they need to be. Now, when you hear that, what comes to mind? Well, it, it, it has this. Um it implies the fact that that teachers are somehow motivated by greed and teachers are motivated by their students no, I, and that's really what they want to see here and I and the teachers have lived in in um, in these cuts they see what large class size does mm -hmm. to their ability to teach they understand when the person that hire mm -hmm. is hired next to them isn't a qualified mm -hmm. certified teacher sure. and that teacher them we have to train that person so they see all these cuts and they want all of them restored so students have in yeah. rural areas and urban areas, suburban areas, the schools they deserve. So, raising the the um, giving raises and salary increases to educators is an important part part of the puzzle, but it's by no means the entire piece. Joe, is it is it your impression that the biggest issue we've got right now is actually starting teacher pay, because after they pay their uh, pension, which has soared now to 12 percent, right off the top of their check. Even if the legislature gives them a little bit more, they're not feeling it in real dollars. They're not, they are spinning their wheels. And a starting teacher is living on 1900 bucks a month. Well, that's, when, it's almost unlivable. It seems like when, the starting pay may be the biggest issue. When you cut a billion dollars out of the system, and, and that's a big number, but it was really about 20% of the funds that we had for our schools, everything is going to suffer. So the 20-year teacher 
is yeah. frozen at a salary. They've not seen any kind of increases in the last several years. The first year teacher definitely is, is at a loss, but it's also about counselors and psychologists, and, and you want to hire good school bus drivers. All of the adults that you have in your school, the public you want them to be focused on that, though. Well, they, they haven't, but educators are, and that's why this Red for Ed movement is going to surprise the governor if he comes out and says, hey, I'm giving teachers a raise. John, if you were an educator, if you were a teacher, and you got a 10% raise, because that's what the governor's really promising, would you walk into the front office in front of everybody that helps you make sure that students are ready to learn and brag about the 10% raise when they got nothing? It would be politically uh, a minefield. It would be difficult, and that's yeah. what educators understand. It takes right. all of us to get these kids ready to make sure that their records are up kept, I, I, and to make sure they have the services they need. I and agree that's with what's you. going to support. The, I agree that's what's going to surprise the governor. I, I agree with you, but I think the public has focused really on teachers, mm -hmm. and and I think even the original Red for Ed push. I the, the messaging was teacher raises, teacher raises. The first, the first demand was, was that all important. And so uh, I think the governor feels that if he gives you that, he's done his job. Well, I, I, I've been with uh, 75,000 and uh, <laughs> 40,000 uh, educators today. But we, but There's we a asked disconnect that there, though. Wouldn't we you asked agree? that question. But these weren't just educators that were out there. These are parents that understand this as well. Parents know when they have a student that encounters long-term substitutes every single yeah. year. Right. You need substitute teachers. I'm not trying to deprofessionalize a right. really important part of our school. But they see the textbooks that kids bring home that are mm -hmm. taped together with duct tape. They see the broken computers that kids and the old technology right. that their students are using or the lack of technology. There, there's a solution here, and that solution is Well, I hope there in, is. I do. I believe <laughs> it. In 2020, 301 is going to be up for renewal, and Prop 301. And right now it's at a protected 0.6. Well, we all, they, they renew the governor. That's right. But you guys re, re, that, that signed is, on. That's right. So that's not ever going to be in jeopardy. But the people of Arizona can decide in 2020 if they want to go another full penny or nine-tenths of a penny. That's the solution that the people of this state uh, decide how they want to can tax themselves. Can you wait two more years? Well, remember, if you go to the ballot in, in 2020, you're not going to see that until the 2021 school year. Uh, so actually, the 21-22 the mm -hmm. school year. So? And so if we go to the ballot this year, we're still going to be, if we go to the ballot in 2018, we're still making our educators wait an entire full school year before they see any of this relief. So it has to be budget and ballot. Quick break. Uh, State Representative Campbell and uh, Joe Thomas, head of the um, AEA, back in a moment on Newsmaker Sunday. Final moments of Representative Noel Campbell, re uh, Republican from Prescott. He proposed a one cent temporary sales tax. All of the money would go to education, and that would backfill some of the losses we've experienced in, in funding for education over the last 10 years. Joe Thomas, president of the Arizona Education Association. Final thoughts. We've got, we've got uh, some movement now. Um, the governor is proclaiming a victory in a deal. Teachers will get paid 20 percent over a three-year period. Do you believe that will end the strike Monday? Uh, I believe educators are going to be very upset that the governor has refused to listen to them. He's ignored uh, that this is about students. He's trying to make it about salaries. That's an important piece. But they really want to make sure that their students have the technology. So this won't settle. Size. I do not believe this is going to sell Do you think there will be teachers out on Monday still? I, I think it's a strong possibility to see teachers out at the Capitol trying to let the governor for one more time understand that this is about students. This is not about teachers being greedy. Okay, l Joe, let me ask you just a political question here. Is there a point where a strike or a walkout, whatever phrase you want to use, starts to erode public support for a coming ballot initiative. Well, everybody wants to be in the classroom. Everybody wants to be back in their work sites, but educators are taking the risk of their jobs right now so people will pay attention to their students. I think it is incredibly courageous, and I agree that after a while something has to give, and we really hope that it is the governor giving them a chance to talk, and so he will listen and understand that the true issues in our education system are far more than just teacher salary. Uh, Representative, final word. There's no money in the budget other than for the teacher compensation patch, package. That's it. And we have other needs in this state to maintain a balanced budget and fund this for the teacher increases in compensation. It's there. It's not enough, in my opinion. And we need a separate funding source. And, and that's, that's going to be a ballot initiative. And, and the, uh, they're bringing that up. So the people of Arizona are going to have a say in this if they can get the signatures uh, for the upcoming election. Thank you. And I, I never have a problem with the voters deciding whether they want to tax themselves. You think it'll pass? I, I think if it gets to the ballot, it, it would pass, yes. Good to see you both. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Representative and uh, Joe. Great to see you as always. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week on Newsmaker Sunday.